Excellent. It's a holiday, so that means slasher movie. And for April Fool's Day, that goes hand in hand with horror. Who among us hasn't put on a mask and killed several people as an April Fool's joke? Hell, this isn't even the only horror movie of 1986 to feature April Fool's Day, as there was also Killer Party and Slaughter High. Gonna have to pencil those in for future reviews around this time of year. From Friday the 13th producer Frank Mancuso Jr., and even featuring Amy Steele of Friday the 13th Part 2, April Fool's Day is like an Agatha Christie slasher film. It has a group of friends spending their weekend in a nice island home, only for it to be filled with the horror of short-sheeting the bed and murder. Clearly, the mystery is guessing who is going to be the life of the party. Um, I'm going to say the person with the knife who is sporting the forgotten 80s hairstyle, the noose braid, and get your damn feet off the table! And there was some qualified people attached behind the scenes here. The movie was written by Danilo Bach, who had a co-story credit on Beverly Hills Cop, and was directed by Fred Walton, who also directed the classic When a Stranger Calls, and would later direct the sequel When a Stranger Calls Back, and The Stepford Husbands? What? Never mind that, we've got some excellent filmmaking coming our way with this one. Hi, uh, my name is Mary O'Reilly O'Toole. Psych, found footage movie, of course. I would have thought it would have been the remake that would go the found footage route. I'm just kidding, it's only the opening scene that's like this, as the characters tell us all about themselves. And I fuck on the first day. Yeah. <laughs> April Fool's. So does she bang on the first date or not? I need to know these things. Uh, kid, kid, how about you? I pass. She survived Jason Voorhees. She has no time for your tomfoolery. Or Thomas F. Foolery. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. I fuck on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until George McFly put a stop to that at once. But the host of this gathering, Muffy, is taking her time putting the house together. Hurry, they're almost here! This will be a perfect place to store dead bodies and for people to find pivotal information. Or for Muffy to find pivotal flashback sequences. <laughs> box contains both the opening titles and the music of Charles Bernstein, who also did the score for A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Entity, and White Lightning. And April Fools, that's not Jay Baker. It's Valley Girl's Deborah Foreman, who I'm sure is in this on the grounds of you better release this goddamn thing, unlike Grizzly 2. I appreciate that the music credit comes in when she receives the Jack in the Box and is still turning it in the present. What child wouldn't love this? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> April Fools, it's a possessed monster dick. The whole gang is almost together, in a way that looks like they're either sailing with Saul for his big send-off, or they're in a slasher movie. Either way, it's gonna be horny. I've seen you around. Jewett Hall, right? Yeah, Chaz Vashinsky. You. You've got great legs. Chaz. Chaz, you have a whole island of people to sexually harass. Why start now? They do put a lot of clues in the movie that foreshadow the ending, one of which being Muffy's acting experience. Did you see her in Ghosts? No. Oh, she was wonderful. She was amazing as the piece of pottery. The movie even has its own crazy Ralph to say, If you kiss our handyman and speed to the last minute to board the ferry, you're all doomed. Doomed to spend a weekend with comic reliefs. Uh, but please, call me Hal. Only my folks call me Harv, and I just can't stand it. Uh, sure, it's a pretty spot here, isn't it? No way are we sending this into Star Search. It'll be a weekend of classic Switchblade pranks and people's flies being open. Rob here knows how to sense a practical joke. That's Ken Olant. He's faced off against the Leprechaun. They're in good hands if anyone comes to attack with a pogo stick. Hell, it looks like they just want to spend the entire weekend bothering each other. So I figured Muffy must stand for something. Muffin? Muff child, Muff old. Muff dive. This was before the invention of flirting, hence this interaction as well. 
my germs or something for her to remember me by. This seems like the kind of group that is looking for a reason to complain on this trip. Could have spent a weekend there? Would you rather be on the boat with Skip and Arch this close to killing each other over a Switchblade game? What, 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 are you scared? Nobody calls Biff scared. Or a chicken, oh right, and that was Marty's line. Ha <laughs> ha, April Fools. This is like a whole movie made up of characters who are Shelly. Why isn't Shelly in this movie? Even the people running the boat are getting in on this action. Ha! Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, don't you worry. We'll get this man's crushed face and body off to the hospital and fix him right up. Enjoy your party weekend. They stand for very little joshing on this island. Tricks. Pranks. Ask your friends, is your dad around? Your little games have possibly smashed a man to death, but I'm giving you one more chance. Don't let it happen again. I know some of you may be a little shocked seeing a man's eye hang out of his socket, but pick a room and get settled in before dinner. After basking in this view. It's like a dream. On a clear day, you can see the Kennedys. Seriously, look, there's George Kennedy's backyard. This place has everything. I don't know why. I just feel like the ghoulies need to show up. Maybe because of the house or because Griffin O'Neill was in Ghoulies Go to College. Whoa, now what? Oh, it's dinner. Phew. The cast are all working well together, like in this scene where they're doing a Cosmopolitan quiz, which is what the actors were doing in between takes until the director noticed how funny it was and asked them to improv a scene like this for the movie. They picked all the right people. Deborah Goodrich was a supporting character in just one of the guys. If Rob can sense leprechauns, she can sense which one of them is in disguise. Hi, my name is Mary O'Toole O'Reilly O'Shea. And I want to go to convent school. Arch isn't very good at his costumes. And damn, Chaz's camera work has gotten a lot better since the opening scene. Would we come back, find out who gets the whoopee cushion? Marty Ranson is still a dork, but tonight he's getting even. Best Run Pictures presents Slaughter High. With the sun going down, that means the topics of conversation can get a lot more serious. Poor boy can say, fuck you, Dad. I'm my own person. Um, can we go back to answering the sex questions? There, dinner is served. Don't worry, everyone. I hear they were able to put the fairy man's eye back in his socket. We'll let you know later about the fractured penis. I think they may be running out of pranks. <laughs> that or he really did shit his pants. The hell is going on here? It genuinely seems dangerous to be around them on April Fool's Day. You have a better chance at surviving a killer. And don't think they're totally heartless. They bring up the ferryman. Well, I'm sure he's getting the best medical care available, right? You guys, let's change the subject. Yeah, F that dude. Even here, you can also tell the cast did spend a lot of time together in the weeks before filming started. They have a very good rapport with one another. I mean, how can anyone be serious about anything when, when some moron can steal a bomb or push a button and nuke us all until our shadows glow? And it sounds like they spent their time watching the day after. All they need to do is look to see who has the shifty prankster eyes when giving the toast. Oh. <laughs> and it's battery acid, you slime! Wait, wait, what the hell are you doing? Are you crazy? Either that cigar is gonna explode, or this room is filled with gas! <laughs> that one's a classic. Come on in here, guys. This is gonna be great! We're gonna replace the mattress with a bed of nails and crush them with a sack of bricks. The movie is filled with clues. Clues that are gonna piss them off. The hell? Spoiler alert of the body count of the fog! But now we know what's gonna explode. Whoa, careful. No one needs to see you dressed as an old cartoon gag if you become famous. Jeez, H.H. H. Holmes didn't even have this many pranks in his house. Who is this? Who is kidding who with this one? 
Oh, one of those novelty cat clocks. I always wanted one of those. Even I have a headache watching them stay in this house. They even have baby noises to keep them awake. These aren't pranks. They're just making them go crazy as some kind of weird experiment. Like the classic light switch gag that turns one off and another one on. This just makes me think Bugs Bunny designed this house in a scheme to make Yosemite Sam curse to screw him out of an inheritance. If they can avoid the threat of Arch's penis. <laughs> Muffy. Arch! <laughs> oh, you get away, Arch. I'm sure you'll find someone's room to barge into and crawl into their bed as they sleep. Or not. I guess this ooh -la, la magazine will do. <laughs> Joke's on you, slapstick is what turns him on even more. At least Skip is politely seeing if he can fetch the severed ear of the ferryman, and to put away all of the jump scares for the evening. <coughs> that wasn't because of pranks. The cat would have been there regardless what holiday this slasher movie takes place. Same with this person. <laughs> Another clue to the movie's ending? Everyone is off-screened to death. Now to start off our day training to break away prison bars like Popeye, a fellow survivor of April Fool's Day. So what's gonna happen here? Is the soccer ball full of bees? It better not be full of bees. Or maybe it's that you can't get any studying done with all these sports going on. Why you thought you'd get any studying done this weekend is a whole other question. At least that seems more fun than Rob, who is spending this whole weekend moping about his career advisor. Jesus, this guy is such a wet blanket. He seems like the kind of person who would say, You know, April Fool's Day isn't funny, actually. See, they can't even have sex without the dead body of Skip being a creeper pervert, even in death. But they're not too sure. It could have been a dead dock worker. I'm just saying, this lake is probably filled with plenty of those. Although, Skip doesn't go anywhere without his trusty switchblade, which is actually kind of an issue. We should talk to him about this when we find him. Not only are they going too far with the pranks, but also too far with the drama. That's why you invited me here, isn't it? Isn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I believe you. Arch, meanwhile, is still looking for Skip so he can crush his knees with a pipe. He's running out of prank ideas, too. Hey, hey, down here. I'm just a harmless snake. I'm not Satan, I swear. Wait, hmm, who else in this cast would know about these Friday the 13th Part 2 style traps? Anyway, sorry guys, no luck. We haven't found Skip or the rest of my pants. The phones also aren't working properly. The only pizza place we can order from is the one with one star. What diabolical fiend is doing this? Plus, Muffy is acting crazier as the movie goes on. Same with the house. What's happening? There's no water. What? It doesn't help her stability that this is obviously the house from the money pit. I still see no reason to question Muffy. They're probably playing some kind of stupid trick. Seems legit. She hasn't gone the full Melissa Sue Anderson and happy birthday to me yet. However, this guy is going the full porkies. Because I would really like to plow your field. He really likes farming. But look, one of us has to go down in the well. Otherwise, how will we find the remains of the hundreds of dead ferrymen? I'm sure Muffy has nothing to do with this. Uh, Muffy, where do you, uh, where do you keep your guns? Guns? We don't keep guns. I mean, unless you need some classic prank guns. I've got a hundred. Thankfully, they can call in to the exposition hotline, where the sheriff tells them to all stick together. You know what that means. We should definitely split up. That way, Muffy can confront them individually. Sometimes, with the tides, it could take somebody all night to get it from the mainland. You're being weird! Uh, I guess no weirder than usual. Carry on! Nothing to see here. Yes, yes, we have found some newspaper clippings about car accidents, someone having an abortion, and also, ooh, something kinky. But what does any of this have to do with Muffy? I'm going upstairs. 
Yeah, okay, maybe she's a little suspicious. The stairs probably are the safest place to hang out. See? Ow, 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 stupid hot water trick! This house is pissing me off! It's best they play around with the sex toys and not call 911. Who knows what kind of weird shit will happen if they do that. And now it's time for Lloyd's Out of Context 911 Lone Star Clip of the Week. Hi to Rosie and the boys. <laughs> Anthrax flowers, April Fools! Sure, now Chaz has his penis chopped off, but I'm sure he did that to himself on accident. Finally, though, Rob gives Kit the info about not trusting Muffy. It's what the sheriff told them. As for the sticking together part, well, I mean, clearly we had to ignore that. That's just the sheriff being paranoid. We need to find the pivotal information we hinted at. It's gonna be killer dolls somehow, isn't it? Now let's go find the others. Fracking, fracking, stupid door! Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern didn't have to deal with a house this annoying. Yes, there's dead bodies, but there could still be a simple explanation. Frankly, we're all very surprised they haven't died from setting up their own pranks yet. There's even more clues, like someone being unstable and spending time in an institution, which is usually the kind of info you leave on a boat. But seriously, this is the kind of horror movie that is fun to watch twice, as you pick up on all of the clues if you know the twist. It is pretty thoroughly planned out, as opposed to just throwing in something at the last minute. As for now, let's consider that maybe Muffy has an evil twin sister named Buffy. It's not Muffy, it's her twin sister Buffy! She's got a twin sister! I mean, duh. Am I the only one here who has seen Happy Birthday to me? The clues are all there that this could still be just a prank. The main characters are named Muffy, Skip, Chaz, Kit, and Arch. That doesn't spell murder. That sounds like a story full of shenanigans. Trust me, I'm right. <laughs> See? April Fools! They're still alive, and they're standing around silently because they're not sure which of them gets the rights to write the script for David Fincher's The Game. <laughs> Should we tell the other guy, April Fools? I love you! Yeah! Nah, let him scream it out for a little while longer. So this was all a plan for her to keep her house so she can turn it into a country inn featuring a whodunit mystery and raise enough money to pay off expenses. Probably best let the future tenants know it's fake. That could go south otherwise. I guess that answers the question of who among us hasn't put on a mask and killed people. The answer? The characters in April Fool's Day. The ending of the movie was a source for both positive and negative reviews. Many praised it for being a real tongue-in-cheek slasher that plays with the genre and goes right along with some movies like Friday the 13th Part 6, Slumber Party Massacre, or Student Bodies. And it's hard to be mad at a slasher that ends with the partying instead of starting with it, and with Three Dog Nights Mama Told Me Not To Come playing as they dance with the props. But there were some that hated the twist. Honestly, when I saw it as a kid, I remember being pissed. Like, what? No one dies! I feel cheated! There was even an alternate ending shot where Skip goes crazy and wants revenge for the prank, and the others have to kill Skip, which is reflected in the movie's novelization. But, nah, it's better without that. And when I saw it again later as a teenager, I do like the ending. It's better without another twist where someone gets killed. And with the final fake-out stinger that's an extra April Fool's Day gotcha on the audience, I love how the movie sticks with its twist and doesn't cop out. It leaves it as a slash movie with a body count of zero. It did do well at the box office, where it was able to make more than double its budget, but was also able to find an even bigger audience on cable TV airings. Since all of its deaths are off-screen, it made it easy for there to be an edited-for-television version. 
It's a solid dark comedy slasher film, where the constant pranking is pretty funny. And it's well shot, too, because cinematographer Charles Minky knows how to shoot holiday movies. He shot Mother's Day and New Year's Eve. Oddly enough, those are the ones with a bigger body count. And yes, it was remade as a direct-to-video movie in 2008. Did that movie contain all the things that made the 86 version clever? Ha! No! April Fools! Come and get it!